when we first think about cultures, we often think about countries. For example, Japanese culture or U.S. culture. These are large-scale cultures. There are also what are called microcultures. These are subcultures that exist within larger cultures. Newly defines microcultures in this way. An identifiable group of people who share a set of values, beliefs, and behaviors, and who possess a common history and verbal and nonverbal symbol system that is similar to, but systematically varies from, the larger, often dominant, cultural milieu. Let's break this definition down so that we can understand it better. An identifiable group of people. If other people do not recognize them as a group, their culture may not be strong enough to really be a microculture. Who share a set of values, beliefs, and behaviors. This fits perfectly with the 3P model of culture that we looked at in Unit 1. Cultures are defined by their perspectives, practices, and products. Who possess a common history. Having a common history is another requirement for an identifiable cultural group. Who possess a common verbal system. The verbal system is language. The members of the microculture speak the same language. Often, this includes special terms that only people in the microculture use, slang or jargon. Sometimes, this means that the microculture speaks a different language from the larger culture. An example of this would be the Spanish-speaking Latinos in the United States, who possess a common nonverbal symbol system. The members of the microculture may use different clothing that helps to identify them. They may have in common a special type of art or music. They may use different gestures when they are together that is similar to, but systematically varies from, the larger, often dominant, cultural milieu. This means that the microculture has a lot in common with the larger culture, but they also have certain key differences. If you start to think about it, you are a member of many microcultures. As your postings last week showed, your classroom is one microculture that you move through and create each day. Other microcultures in your life might have to do with your hobbies, family ties, profession, religion, or politics. We can see that there are many microcultures, and this is connected to the many different aspects of a person's identity. In the next two activities, we will explore both of these topics. One, the different aspects of our identities, and two, the different microcultures we participate in.